Today we're going to create a very short little game. Uh, it's not really going to be a full game, but give you some basic ideas on how some things can be done. Once again, I am not the best programmer in the world. There may be better ways of doing this, especially when it comes to Pi game. Uh, I know a bit, but not a whole lot. Um, but hopefully this tutorial will help you learn some stuff. So let's get started. Uh, if you look in the folder we're in, there's another folder called Images. And let's have a look at those images. I'm going to use GNOME Open Images. And it opens up this folder. I've got two images in here. I got shot.png and ship.png. They are two images that are PNGs with transparent background layers. Uh, the shot I created in GIMP, the other one I downloaded offline. Let's close that and let's start typing our code out. We'll just call it uh, ship.py. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. And we're going to start off with our normal uh, USR, which in the past I've probably said user, and I found out recently it isn't user, it stands for Unix System Resources, I believe. Uh, forward slash bin, forward slash env for environment, and our environment's going to be Python. Okay, so this is going to be a Pi game code, so we're going to import Pi game, and we're also going to import sys, and then from Pi game locals, we're going to import asterisk for all. This line right here is saying, so we got Pi game, so we can create a screen and load images to it. Pi game locals and import allows us to grab inputs from a keyboard or mouse. So key presses and mouse button presses, you need that there. Anyway, next thing we're going to create, we're going to create an object. We'll call it clock. And that type of object will be, that object will be a Pi game dot time dot capital clock and this will be part of our code that uh, basically will help limit uh, how the frame rate of the game and you want to limit that because if you ever play an old DOS game and you try to play it on a newer computer sometimes you start up and everything's super super fast and you just can't see what's going on and basically it's unplayable that's because they didn't put in a limit back then and they weren't calculating for faster computers so uh, we're going to be using this clock object to limit our game to 60 frames per second. Now, it may run slower than that if your computer's slower, but you won't go faster than 60 frames per second, meaning that, you know, 5, 10 years from now when computers are faster than they are now, your game will still be playable. Uh, so let's also start our while loop. Your while loop will have basically your main loop. We'll say while true, and we'll put in here, uh, we'll use our clock object dot tick, and we'll put in here 60. And that will limit our game to 60 frames a second. Uh, let's go back up here and create our main window. We'll call it screen. So we're creating a screen object, and that object is a Pi game dot display. So it's a Pi game display. And we're going to set the mode. And inside double brackets here, give the resolution of our window. We'll go 800 by 600. And at this point, we can save this. We can change the mode of the game, change mod plus X for ship.py. That makes it executable. And at this point, we can dot slash the name of our script. And there is our window. Uh, nothing going on in it. You can see my cursor on it here. We're going to get rid of that in a moment. We can't even hit X to close this window because we didn't even put that function in yet. So to close it, we'll go back to our terminal here and hit control C to kill it. And we'll go back into our text editor and continue with our code. Uh, the next thing we want to do in this game, basically we're creating a, if I haven't said this already, kind of like a Space Invader game, but we're going to create just the ship that shoots. We're not going to go into any collision damage. We're not going to have any bad guys. Um, but we want the ship to follow your mouse, so we don't need to see our cursor. So we're going to say pygame.mouse.set visible. To zero. One would be true, visible. Zero would be false, meaning not visible. So you can't see the cursor. I'll show you. We'll run the code again. And you can see my cursor over here, but when I go onto the Pi game screen, it becomes invisible. Still can't close the window here. We're going to add that feature now. We'll come down here to our while loop and we'll add a for loop inside there. We'll say for event in so we're creating a object event 
and in that event will be a pi game dot event dot get parentheses and colon and this is saying basically this is going to be continuously checking for any keyboard or mouse inputs now within that if event dot type so if the type of event equals pi game dot capital quit colon we're going to say sys dot exit and basically that's going to kill our application when we hit the top x in our screen so pi game quit means clicking the x what are we going to do when you click that x we're going to exit the game let's save that and run it so here we are we have our window once again my cursor is invisible while over the screen portion of it but if i come up here to the x i can click x and it kills our application now we're making good progress and let's continue now let's load an image we're going to create an object we're going to call it ship and this will obviously be our ship the ship it's going to be an object what type of object is it going to be it's going to be a pi game image and we're going to load an image from a file so inside parentheses and inside quotations we're going to say images because that's our folder forward slash ship dot png now i do want to point out here uh, this isn't hundred percent correct uh, it works on most systems most systems uh, linux uh, mac os bsd uh, and open solaris most operating systems are unix based or unix like and they use forward slash now if you're running a windows machine you use a backslash instead of a forward slash not a problem for my users because all my users use Unix or some other open source, I'm sorry, Linux or some other open source operating system. Uh, but let's say you want to make a game and you want to distribute it to people who are in Windows. Um, this is going to prevent you from doing that. Luckily, Python has an option to make it usable regardless of the operating system. We're not going to get into that today, and I'll do a tutorial in the future, but basically, the I believe it's the OS module has a path feature, and basically, uh, you put something in there instead of the forward slash, and it will figure out what operating system you're on and, and do it properly for you. So keep that in mind, though. If you're on a Windows system, you need to make that a backslash instead of a forward slash because Windows is just different than everybody else in the world when it comes to that. Um, but that's loading our image onto an object we just created called ship. And now we need to position that ship. Uh, and we want to position it uh, to start off in the center of the screen at the bottom of the screen. So let's start off with the bottom of the screen. We're going to create a variable called ship top, and this will be the top of our ship image and we're going to just going to say screen it's equal to screen dot get height so we're getting the height of our screen and we're going to subtract the ships get height so we're finding the height of the screen which in this case we know is 600 uh, and we're subtracting the height of our uh, image which off the top of my head I don't know what it is and that's why we can grab it like this now you could put the actual numbers in I could figure out the the pixel resolution of our uh, our ship PNG and I can subtract that from 600 but using these objects here the screen height and the ship height uh, you're good if you change the size of your display to something else you don't have to go and change it everywhere and if you change the size of the image that you're using as your ship you don't have to change it everywhere so that's why we're doing it this way it's just a more appropriate way to do it now we also have to do a similar thing to center it on the screen we're gonna say ship left so we're creating a variable called shift left and ship left and we're gonna say it's equal to the screen dot get width so we're getting the let's spell things right uh, we're getting the width of the screen which we know is 800 but we want to center it so we're going to divide that by 2 which would give us 400 once again you can type 400 but then if you change it at the top it's going to screw everything up you have to change it everywhere uh, and, but we're also going to have to subtract that because even though that's the center of the screen that would be aligning the left of our image to that which would mean it would be slightly off center to the right so now we have to get the ships so ship get width 
and we have to divide that by two. So if the ship's uh, two, uh, 128 pixels, that would get us 64. So we're centering it on the center of the image, not the left of the image. If you've done any type of graphical programming or game programming, you understand what I'm doing there. If not, I hope I explained it well enough.